Dragon Ball Daima is shaping up to be a love letter for all Dragon Ball fans, capturing the heart and spirit of the franchise in several exciting ways. Even though this is not Super, this is something fans have been asking for for years now which not even Super delivered. Be it the concept of demons and demon realm, Mikayo Shin, Origins of Dragon Balls, the Namekians, or the Supreme Kais, we're just two episodes in, and it's already a total package of what fans have been asking for for years and years together. Moreover, the art style and animation, reminiscent of classic Dragon Ball aesthetics, serve as a nod to the franchise's rich history, offering familiar visuals with modern enhancements. The fact that Akira Toriyama, the creator himself, was heavily involved in the project reaffirms that Dragon Ball Daima is crafted with the passion and care fans have come to expect from the series. This personal touch ensures that both veteran fans and new viewers are treated to a story rooted in Dragon Ball's core essence, humor, camaraderie, and thrilling adventures. By de-aging characters like Goku, Vegeta, and others, it brings a nostalgic twist for longtime fans who grew up with the original series, reminding them of simpler times before the high-stakes battles that define later arcs. Daima isn't just a nostalgic love letter, it's also packed with rich lore that deepens the universe for longtime fans, the series takes a fresh dive into previously unexplored corners of the Dragon Ball mythos like the Demon Realm, blending both new and familiar elements to expand the narrative. Thus, Dragon Ball Daima isn't just a celebration of the past, it's an expansion of the franchise's future, promising to add new layers to the already rich tapestry of Dragon Ball history, while also providing fresh mysteries and adventures for fans to sink their teeth into. Before moving forward, make sure to join our Discord server, Hypes World, to hang out and chill with other Dragon Ball fans, the link is in the description. Now, let's dive into the episode. The episode starts with Shenron fulfilling Goma's wish to turn everyone who fought against Majin Buu into kids. Then Shenron tells them he has to leave now, which surprises Goma and the others since they thought Shenron offered three wishes. Shenron replies to them that he offers three wishes only to the regulars, not first-timers like Goma. Goma's wish to get the evil third eye remains incomplete as Shenron leaves the lookout and the Dragon Ball scatter around the planet again. Back at the party, Krillin wakes up first and notices Goku and Vegeta fall from above. It would seem as if Goku changed his boots mid-air when he turned into a kid. As before the wish was granted, Goku wore red lace boots, but after becoming a kid, the boots changed to white laces with no explanations. Well, the real reason behind this is that it's actually a design issue. Adult Goku was drawn with red lace boots, and Goku Mini was drawn with white lace boots. So yeah, it's a design inconsistency. Goku and Vegeta don't lose their ability to fly, but it's just that they can't balance their mini bodies while flying. Everyone then notices that they've been turned into kids, and everyone's reaction is actually kind of funny. Then we kick off to the opening theme of Daima, Jaka Jan. It starts with the three Dragon Balls from Demon Realm with Goku's palm trying to grab them. The opening then shows us our first detailed look at one of the levels of the Great Demon Realm. We see visuals of Pansy and Bulma working together to fix something, which means that Bulma will be joining Goku in this Demon Realm adventure. Gives the OG Dragon Ball vibes, doesn't it? We then get a better look at the Tamagamis. The one-star Tamagami with a sword with Goma's castle in the background, the two-star Tamagami with a trident in the seas, and finally the three-star Tamagami with a hammer in the rocky areas. Now, if you notice the Japanese lyrics during these visuals, you can see that they mention Akira Toriyama in it. We then cut to see the mini versions of all the characters who were involved in the fight against Majin Buu. Everyone's here, even Marin, but no Gohan or Videl can be seen anywhere. We are then introduced to Deborah's father, Supreme Demon King Abora, and I think we'll see more of him and Deborah in Daima. We are then shown a teaser of the evil third eye and how it looks. Probably somewhere or the other, Goma or someone else will get their hands on this, and it will play an important role in the Daima story. The visual of adult Goku with his power pole on his flying Nimbus is surely a feast for the eyes. This reminds me of the Dragon Ball Z opening where Goku rides the Nimbus Cloud with Gohan. The next few visuals include Goku and others fighting the Demon Realm Corps and the Tamagamis in their Super Saiyan forms. The opening ends with a cool Nakatsuru shot of Super Saiyan Goku firing a Kamehameha. The episode starts off with Goma pissed for not being able to wish for the Tertian Oculus. He orders Neva to prepare the Demon Realm's Dragon Balls to grant his wish, to which Neva tells him that he first needs to challenge the Tamagamis to get the Dragon Balls for his wish, and it seems Goma doesn't like to fight them as he thinks of finding another way. Goma thinks it was a waste for them to come all the way to Earth when he couldn't actually get what he desired but then Degasu tells him that it wasn't actually a waste at all. Pointing at Dende and Mr. Popo who have now turned into kids, well, Dende is a baby now. Goma kidnaps Dende and takes him to the Demon Realm with them so that the Dragon Balls on Earth remain unusable. Degasu grabs Dende and the trio leaves for Demon Realm. Back at the party, everyone's still confused about what's happened to them and why they're the only ones who have turned into kids and not the other staff at 
capsule core. Vegeta is unable to recognize Mr. Satan in his mini form, and there's a funny exchange here. Bulma and Chi Chi are happy to get back their glowing skin. Vegeta and Piccolo discuss Shenron might have something to do with this since the sky did go dark during that moment. Supreme Kai says that he sensed something sinister at the lookout. Goku tries to fly there, but he crashes into tables as he's unable to balance his body. Also, Goku then finds out that Master Roshi has become a kid as well, but he's still the same old Roshi we know and love. Supreme Kai teleports Goku and Piccolo to the lookout. There, Mr. Popo informs them about what happened. Hearing the name Demon Roam makes Supreme Kai scared. Popo mentions that one of the people who came there looked like Supreme Kai and his name was Degasu. Kabito tells everyone that Degasu is Supreme Kai's younger brother. Popo also mentions about Neva, the Namek to which Piccolo reacts with surprise. According to him, Neva is the legendary Namek who stayed back in the Demon Realm to protect the Dragon Balls. Popo tells them about the wish that turned everyone into kids. Unfortunately, the gang can't use instant teleportation to go to the Demon Realm and rescue Dende. Upon asking the reason, Supreme Kai makes a weird tensed face. We'll probably get some answers to this in the future. Supreme Kai instructs Kabito to get the spaceship they have on their planet. It's the spaceship that Supreme Kai used to travel to this universe a long time ago. Supreme Kai is probably referring to the time when he came to the Kaioshin Realm in Universe 7 from the Demon Realm, and if we look at the ship's design, it resembles Goma's ship. However, Supreme Kai's ship doesn't seem to be working, so they decide to get Bulma to fix it so they can leave for Demon Realm. Vegeta comes along with Bulma as he obviously can't let someone get away with turning him into a kid. Bulma asks about the ship's terrible condition, to which Kabito replies that it suffered some damage when Goku and Vegeta fought Majin Buu in the Kaioshin Realm. Bulma says she can fix it, but it would take her 10 days to do so. And so, two days have passed since Dende was kidnapped. Goku can be seen training his mini body to get used to it, while Bulma is still working on fixing the spaceship. Goku tries to kick the pillar, but turning small has made his sense of distance all screwy. Vegeta, Piccolo, and the others discuss how to get turned back to normal. Vegeta asks a very good question to Supreme Kai, if every being with pointy ears is from the Demon Realm, to which Supreme Kai answers that not everyone, but most of them are. Kabito goes deep into history as he says that most of the Majins escape the Demon Realm to rule other planets. Traveling in and out of the Demon Realm is forbidden now, and you need permission to do so. Goku runs off to Korin's place to get his power pole back, but it's not where Goku left it in the early days. Korin remembers that he had Roshi hold onto it not too long ago. Goku again tries to fly, but falls, so Korin tells him to use the Nimbus Cloud, to which Goku declines. I really wish we get to see Goku Mini with his power pole and flying Nimbus before Daima ends. Goku returns to the lookout with his power pole from Roshi. He shows off his skills to everyone at the lookout and scares Piccolo for a bit. During dinner, Goku asks Piccolo if he remembers Demon Realm at all, to which Piccolo says that he wasn't born back then, but he's heard a lot of things about that place. He tells everyone that that's the place Namix are originally from, but they escaped the Demon Realm because Namix don't like to be ruled. Just then, Glorio appears in his spaceship at the lookout. Seeing the spaceship, Piccolo senses strong malice from it. Popo recognizes the ship to be the same one the Demon Realm baddies used, but a different color, so everyone gets in position to be ready for whatever comes out of the ship. Glorio steps out of the ship and asks Goku to come with him to the Demon Realm and help him defeat King Goma. He describes Goma as the evil Majin who became the king after Deborah's death. Supreme Kai also comments that he's heard Goma is someone not to be taken lightly. He's got both muscles and brains. Glorio tells everyone that he's actually there to get Goku at, at the request of the king of the third demon world. This is interesting. It means the three levels of Demon Realm each have a king of their own, and Deborah was probably the king of all three worlds. That's probably why they refer to Goma as King Goma and Deborah as Supreme King Deborah. And right now, Goma wants to become the next Supreme King once he gets his hands on the evil third eye. And the other two kings are against this idea. That's what I assume. Do let us know what you think in the comments. Goku is ready to tag along with Glorio to the Demon Realm to save Dende, but Supreme Kai also makes a request to join him as his brother Degasu is involved in this mess. Supreme Kai tells Goku not to lower his guard for Glorio as he wasn't surprised to see them turn into kids. Goku assumes the third king informed him about the wish, but Supreme Kai is still suspicious about the guy. Bulma requests Glorio to let her have a look at his ship's architecture. After getting a quick look at it, she tells everyone that she'll complete fixing the spaceship soon. Vegeta also wants to hop in, but Glorio tells him that the ship can carry only three people and it doesn't matter if your kids are adults. Supreme Kai suggests he join them after Bulma fixes the spaceship to which Vegeta agrees, and then Glorio, Goku, and Supreme Kai take off to the Demon Realm and that's where the episode ends. The ending theme Nakama starts playing and we see some amazing visuals and callbacks to the past Dragon Ball series. The beginning of the ending reminds me of Dragon Ball Super ending 10's first few scenes which opens with sunlight and Kid Goku stands near the lake. We see various new visuals of the Demon Realm and most of them look like Namekian houses, like the ones we see on Planet Namek. This particular visual reminds me of GT. 
Don't you think so too? Guess Daima really is GT 2.0. We then see Goku and the gang cooking a big fish for lunch. Pansy and Goku both look very hungry. I'm looking forward to their on-screen chemistry. This could be a callback to the first episode of Dragon Ball when Bulma's car hit Goku as he was coming from the lake with a huge fish. It all started with a fish, and here we are. In the same shot, Bulma wears a t-shirt that says 40. This could be her actual age before becoming a kid thanks to the wish, but I don't think Bulma's that old. In that case, this 40 could be for the 40th anniversary of Dragon Ball, which is this year, and Daima is produced as a commemoration of the 40th anniversary of the series. Bulma and Goku are the first characters to be introduced to the audience in the Dragon Ball world, so her wearing the 40 t-shirt makes sense for the 40th anniversary of the series. The next episode is titled Daima, and we can see the trio looking at the amazing scenery of the demon world. As we enter the demon realm next episode, we can expect to see tons of new characters, and it will be interesting to see who will help Goku and who will scheme conspiracies against him, and who is truly pulling the strings in this dangerous domain. The long-awaited journey plunges our heroes into a dark and mysterious world unlike anything they've faced before. The lore also deepens as we start to learn more about the demon realm's connection to the main Dragon Ball universe. Overall, this episode sets the stage for what's shaping up to be an exciting and lore-rich story arc, packed with all the elements that make Dragon Ball such an enduring series. In terms of lore, this episode delivers plenty of new questions while sprinkling in subtle callbacks to past arcs. Longtime fans will appreciate the nods to the original series, especially with the emphasis on magic and adventure, while the new mystery surrounding the de-aging and the villain keeps things fresh. It's a perfect blend of action, humor, and intrigue, with enough fan service to keep old school fans hooked, and plenty of new developments to reel in fresh viewers. If this episode is anything to go by, Dragon Ball Daima is going to be an unforgettable ride. That's it for the day. Hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next week. Till then, farewell Dragon Ball lads.